Lesson 12.3a, Pythagorean Theorem in the Coordinate Plane. We can approximate the length of a hypotenuse of a right triangle that is drawn on a coordinate plane by using the Pythagorean Theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. For our first step, we find the length of each leg by counting the square units. So for the vertical leg, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and for the horizontal leg, we have 1, 2, 3. For step 2, we'll use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse. We're going to let a equal 6, b equal 3, and c represent the length of the hypotenuse. That gives us 6 to the second power plus 3 to the second power is equal to c to the second power. We substitute the values into the formula. 6 times 6 is 36. 3 times 3 is 9, and we have 36 plus 9, which is 45. Now, we take the square of both sides. And, I've mentioned in previous videos, we remove this 2 exponent from C by putting a square root symbol, a radical sign, around the 45. We can use a calculator to find the square root of 45. We hit the square root key, then 4, 5, and the equal sign, we get 6.7n, a longer decimal, but let's round it to the nearest tenth and leave it at 6.7, which means this is approximately c. It's not equal to c because we shaved off some of the decimal values. For step three, we check for reasonableness. We found the length of the hypotenuse to be 6 and 7 tenths units in length, we can check if 6 and 7 tenths units is a reasonable length by using perfect squares. So remember, a perfect square is a square of a whole number. 2 is the square of 4. 3 is the square of 9. 4 is the square of 16. And 5 is the square of 25. See how we have 2, 3, 4, 5? Well, for the square root of 45, it's between the square root of 36, which is 6, and the square root of 49, which is 7. 45 is in between 36 and, th and 49. We know it's greater than the square root of 36, and we know it's less than the square root of 49. It's greater than 6 and less than 7. It's between 6 and 7. Our answer, 6 and 7 tenths, is reasonable. Now, for those of you who don't have a calculator, you can use a cell phone by turning it sideways and you'll see that square root key. We can also use guess and check instead of a calculator. If we need to find the square root of 34, we think, well, between perfect squares, it would be between the square root of 25 and the square root of 36. That means it's between 5 times 5 is 25 and 6 times 6 is 36. It's between 5 and 6 somewhere. We think 34 is closer to 36 than it is to 25, so the length must be closer to the 6 than to 5. So let's try 5.9 squared. We multiply 5.9 times 5.9, and we get 34.81. Well, we went over 34 by 81 hundredths. Let's go back and try a smaller amount like... 5.7 times 5.7, we get 32.49. That is quite a lot less than 34. Let's try 5.8. We multiply 5.8 times 5.8, we get 33.64, which so far is the closest, which we could use 5.8 if we're rounding to the nearest tenth. Now, if you're trying to get closer, you can round to the nearest hundredth, we know it's between 5.8, this 33.64, and 5.9, this 34.81. So we can try 5.82 squared and 5.83 squared, 5.84 squared, and so on to hone it in to get it a little closer. But if you're just trying to solve it for the tenths place, this 5.8 would fit to be approximately C. Now again, it's telling us to approximate the length of the hypotenuse by using a calculator. We count the units. We've got six units horizontally and five units vertically. We substitute the values into the formula and simplify it. 
we get 36 plus 25 is equal to c squared. 36 plus 25 is 61, which means we're looking for the square root of 61. On a calculator, we hit the square root key, 6, 1, and the equal sign. And we get a longer decimal number of 7.8, and it continues, but we're looking for an answer to the nearest tenth, so we write 7.8 approximately C. Now, we can check it for reasonableness. 7.8 is reasonable since the square root of 61 is closer to the square root of 64, and 7.8 is closer to 8 than to 7. The square root of 61 is between the perfect squares of the square root of 49 and the square root of 64, which means it's between 7 and 8, but 61 is much closer to 64, so 7.8 is closer to 8, and that's reasonable. Remember to label the lengths of the legs as A or B before substituting the values into the Pythagorean theorem. Either leg can be assigned to be leg A and leg B. We can say this is leg A and this is leg B. We could say this is leg B and this is leg A. We're finished with 12.3a. We're moving on to 12.3b, finding the distance between any two points. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye.